Hi, this is Bob Kay from the AMD World Championship. We're here in Sturgis 2010, and I have with me today Brian from TPJ Customs. Brian has probably one of the most minimalist looking bikes I've ever come across. Um, he's entered in our freestyle class, and just the tightness and the cleanness of the design is truly amazing. Brian, tell us, uh, where did you get the inspiration for this, and how did you uh, come up with this kind of thought process? Well, Bob, I, uh, I, I raced motocross when I was younger, so everything I believe should be real tight, minimalistic, shouldn't be there unless it was made to go fast or stop. Um, you know, I wanted a motorcycle that had the power plant of most of the Harleys you see out there on the road, but it's just a totally different motorcycle. Uh, it's got nine inches of ground clearance, so it just brings on a whole different look. Um, everything should be, like I said, real tight, like Bob said. Make everything tight, minimalistic, really fast. Um, no excess on it, you know. Well, it certainly um, has come across. I noticed that tank is just so small and tight, and that must have represented some unique challenges. So talk to us a little bit about what it got to do to make that actually a functioning tank and have it fit so nice and tight. Oh, for sure. Uh, the tank was all hand formed in the shop uh, out of just flat 16 gauge steel. Uh, the, my concept was I wanted something really tight, like old motor motocross style, you know, early 70s, stuff like that, but still had the vibe and the, the, the lines of the new stuff. Um, it was real, made a square backbone, as you can see, so making the tunnel was a little easier, but it also required a lot of work to get everything to sit real tight. The clearances are very narrow, but everything is rubber mounted through the center. Um, it's about a gallon and maybe three quarters, so you're not going very far, but you're going very fast as you're going. So. So let's talk about that square bone, uh, backbone tank uh, frame. Where did that come from and what, what did it take to put that together? Uh, you know the frame was actually the biggest challenge. Uh, there's so many, it looks so easy and so minimalistic, but there was a lot of challenges. The uh, transmission is an inch and three quarters up and an inch and a half forward, so it gives it a shorter, tighter look. Uh, I had to make my own uh, belt drive system, I had to find a uh, belt that would work with those pulleys at that distance. Um, the chassis has a very unique stance. It's got nine inches of ground clearance. On the bottom of the frame, there's not one piece of the motorcycle that sticks out. Uh, all of the chain and all of anything that goes to the rear wheel stays above the frame until it meets the tire. Uh, it's got 26 inch or 26.5 degree rake, so 4.5 trail. It's got the same axle distance as the CRF 450, which is one of the best motocross bikes in the world. So to start with that platform and work from there was uh, was a great a great challenge. Well, talk to me a little bit about that front end. I noticed you have exposed springs, real cleaned up trees and everything. Uh, what went into that execution? Actually, the lower uh, the lower parts of the forks were off of a 1971 Honda 125. I uh, took them down, they were all knocked all of the brackets off, all of the mounts, put them in the lathe, turned them down so they looked like they were formed all in one piece. Then decided to make take all the internals, make the tubes and the triple trees, um, and the expo exposed spring, springs is basically, you know, it just looked cool and it actually adds a lot more strength to the front end because of, uh, you know, the 125 was a little bit lighter bike, didn't have as much uh, power to it. So. Yeah, I can tell you really did take a lot out of the 70s motocross. That was a pretty interesting time for racing. Um, what about brakes? What do we got going on there? Uh, we got brake. We got a, just a two-piston JB caliper in the back. Uh, it's plenty of power to stop a 300, 300-pound uh, 300 bike. I use uh, motocross wheels and uh, rims, or the hubs and the rims are all from CRF 450. Machined all the brackets down, the, the rotor mounts. Uh, they're super durable, super lightweight. Uh, these guys are jumping 350 feet now, you know, 60 feet in the air, and this is what they're using. So if it can take that abuse, it can definitely take, stand up to my abuse. So. Well, you know, I think the perfect execution is in the sim simple elegance of this design, um, but this doesn't happen overnight. What kind of time and hours do you have into this build? You know, I got anywhere from 900 to 950 hours in this bike. Um, I, every single piece is handmade in the shop by me. So the time, you know, and, and it takes so much, and that, that's just the hand time. That's not even the sitting around staring at it time. So there's probably another three, 400 hours in that. Um, every piece is handmade, so it's not like I put it on the CNC machine and it, and it whips it out. You know, everything is thought up in my head and then gone outside, whether it's grinding, cutting, 
you know, drilling a hole. You know, that it's all done there in the shop. So everything takes so much time. Well, you've uh, really put it together on this one. We really appreciate your entry and taking the time to get over here for the World Championship. Um, thanks a lot, Brian, and uh, hope to see you again next year. Thank you, Bob. I, I, I just, it's an honor to be a part of these motorcycles in this, uh, in this show, so thank you for letting us be here. Hello, I'm Shelby, and you're watching the AMD World Championship of Custom Bike Building Bitcast. We are sponsored in part by Screaming Eagle Performance Parts, Black Hills Harley-Davidson, K&N Performance Filters. <laughs>